dinner together the next night, and the night after that, and then one night after that. Minsky likes to say you know, her life began when she met Ron, and I think what she means by that is maybe she found the role she was destined to play. She became Ronald Reagan's mentor, and as he traveled around the country to build his career, he couldn't wait to get back to her and to the home she created for. In 1974, Ronald and Nancy Reagan named it Rancho del Cielo, Heaven's Ranch. A perfect description that still holds true today. In fact, they're here today. And earlier, President and Mrs. Reagan went off on horseback to enjoy the beauty of the great outdoors. Well, it sounds like the President and First Lady have returned from their ride. As he tends to the horses, Let's head over to the tack room, where we'll meet with the president as he puts away his riding gear. Hello, Mr. President. Hello. It's a gorgeous day. You know, I've been in and out of this place for years, and I have never seen it look as beautiful as this. Tell us about your ride, Mr. President. Well? Please, uh, sorry. Please, get, get settled. Nancy and I went seven miles up a switchback road. I must admit, Nancy's quite an accomplished horsewoman. She sure is. Mr. President, could you tell us about the ranch? Well, I'm proud of Rancho Del Cielo, a 350-acre ranch overlooking the Pacific Ocean. It truly is America the Beautiful. Yes, and it's very peaceful here, too. Do you find that your time on the ranch helps you balance the pressures that come with being president? To my mind, nothing compares with the kinship between man and animal you find on the back of a horse. Since we only have a few minutes with you today, Mr. President, are there any messages about the country and its future you'd like to share with us? We've got to do a better job of getting across that America is freedom. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of enterprise and freedom is special and rare. So we've got to teach history based not on what's in fashion, but what's important. If we forget what we did, we won't know who we are. Let's start with some basics. More attention to American history and a greater emphasis on civic ritual. Thank you, Mr. President. You've been very kind. Say, so you wouldn't mind if I told you just one more story, would you? Maybe you know this one about the old boy that had taken over some creek bottom land and it was rocky and covered with brush. He got rid of all the rocks and hauled them away and then he planted and he really had a beautiful garden there. And one day at church, he asked the minister to come back with him after the sermon. Well, the reverend arrived and he said, oh my, God has certainly blessed this land. I've never seen anything so wonderful. And look at the corn. I've never seen anything as tall as that. God certainly has been good to this place. And he went on that way until finally the old man was beginning to shuffle a little bit, said, Reverend, I wish you could have seen it when the Lord was doing it by himself. Great story, sir. Any closing thoughts? So it is with our nation. We've been blessed with a vast and beautiful land and with an energetic and enterprising people. Yet it's up to us to keep our nation prosperous, strong, and free. Thank you all very much for being here. God bless you. The Reagans tackled the ranch's reconstruction with their famous respect for the land and its traditions working the land themselves, honoring its authenticity to protect its historic roots in the Golden West. It's very well-rounded. Well, you see his background, right? Yeah. Called to active duty, but his nearsightedness kept him from going overseas. Instead, he was assigned to the domestic motion picture unit. There, he made and appeared in Army training films documentaries, and the wartime musical, This is the Army. Like other members of my generation, I came home from the war expecting a better world. But I didn't like some of the things I saw after VJ Day. My own industry, motion pictures, 
was being ripped apart by a bitter labor dispute. I'm here tonight to announce my intention to seek the Republican nomination for President of the United States. I don't agree that our nation must resign itself to inevitable decline, yielding its proud position to other hands. I am totally unwilling to see this country fail in its obligation to itself and to the other free peoples of the world. The crisis we face is not the result of any failure of the American spirit. It's a failure of our leaders establish rational goals and give our people something to order their lives by. If I'm elected, I shall regard my election as proof that the people of the United States have decided to set a new agenda. The moderator, John Green, an editor of the paper, set the rules for the debate. When Ronald Reagan tried to protest, Green attempted to have his microphone cut off. And the results are as we see them now, beginning with the Republicans. Reagan, our projected winner, with 50% of the vote. Bush, 23%. Reagan beating better than two to one. My fellow citizens of this great nation, with a deep awareness of the responsibility conferred by your trust, I accept your nomination for the presidency of the United States. The atmosphere in downtown Cleveland tonight can only be described as electric. Are you better off than you were four years ago? Is it easier for you to go and buy things in the stores than it was four years ago? Is there more or less unemployment in the country than there was four years ago? Is America as respected throughout the world as it was? Do you feel that our security is as safe, that we're as strong as we were four years ago? And if you answer all of those questions, yes, why then I think your choice is very obvious as to who you vote for. If you don't agree, if you don't think that this course that we've been on for the last four years is what you would like to see us follow for the next four, then I could suggest another choice that you have. I would like to have a crusade today, and I would like to lead that crusade with your help, and it would be one to take government off the backs of the great people of this country and turn you loose again to do those things that I know you can do so well because you did them and made this country great. Thank you. Time has come. We've seen the map. We've looked at the figures, and NBC News now makes its projection for the presidency. Reagan is our projected winner. I consider the trust that you have placed in me sacred, and I give you my sacred oath that I will do my utmost to justify your faith. In the original um, frame uh, uh, diagram, there was no, no room for the height. That's why you had to go down the stairs to, so that it is the correct height for the Oval Office. And you came in through the uh, rose garden. I hope it smells good. Oops, Excuse me. So you came in through the rose garden. You will be exiting through the west wing. There's two other doors. That kind of vanilla door is probably the only one most of us would ever really see in real life. It's it leads to a, a, a little stub. Over the next. Excuse me. That door 
is where you would be vetted by security and then escorted in to oh. the sitting president, do your handshake, do your photo op, and I'll leave it in. That door, the fancy door, is where there is a private study. There's a desk and a little kitchen at it. Every week, uh, President Reagan and Vice President Bush would be leaving us on Thursdays to make sure they were home. They, they could have text max and they didn't know why we complain about the health benefits. <laughs> Space Shuttle Challenger honored us for the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them this morning, as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God.
this is the cockpit. Mannequin represents uh, Lieutenant Colonel Chilander. Uh, that's him right here. The mannequin actually doesn't look anything like him, but that's his actual uniform. He donated it to the library. And he was one of the senior military aides that carried that football you may have seen in the front. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is the communication, secure communication mm -hmm. to military command by the president. Also in this compartment would be uh, President Reagan's press secretary, the speech writer, a physician would be on the, in, the, in here. Uh, this door would be closed during flight uh, so that the com conversations in this compartment and floor would be confidential. As, as I mentioned earlier, if he wanted to talk to the press, he would go to the back. Okay. That uh, photograph behind you is uh, President and Mrs. Reagan. Uh, yeah. Um, getting on Air Force One after he had given his speech in the Brandenburg Gate in uh, Germany. Day or anniversary, we make them feel special and they follow up from home. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your tour today.
the beautiful view from the terrace. This is the uh, terrace. bed of Marine One.
Piece of the Berlin Wall. I know. It really does. I just don't understand why I have to add any equipment that did not follow right now. You're in here? Outside. Uh, 